This is a lesson on right hand walking or um, right hand finger alternation. And it's one of the most important lessons that I can really teach beginner students, but it's even a good review for um, intermediate students as well. And uh, this particular exercise comes from my 20 Favorite Exercises book. Um, I have two technique books, 20 Favorite Exercises and Classical Guitar Technique. 20 Favorite Exercises comes with tab and it's kind of like uh, great for crossover students or students who just want like a small amount of exercises to boost their technique. My classical guitar technique book is much more thorough and it's notation only. Um, there's a couple hundred exercises in it, so it's a little different. So there's a link for those books underneath the video. So this is exercise number one. And like I said, it's one of the most important lessons that I can teach. The basic concept with alternating fingers or right hand walking is just like walking with your legs. Um, if you hop on one foot, it's inefficient. So using both legs, one foot after the other, is the most efficient way of playing. This is one of the most common issues for beginner classical guitarists, is when they're playing their pieces, they'll, they'll hop on one foot, or they'll repeat a finger, um, even though they should just be alternating the two fingers. And just like when you're running with your feet, um, if you hop on one leg, you're going to kind of stumble or it's not going to be as smooth and as fluent. And uh, that's definitely the same thing in guitar playing. So it's one of the most important things. So practicing it on open strings on its own is really important. So what I'll do is I'll walk through the three exercises in, on this page and then um, I'll do a close up with the camera, so I'll just take the camera and put it a little bit closer so you can see more clearly. So um, before I go over the tips, let's just do these exercises. So we're going to start with I am, and we're just going to go across the strings. Try to keep a good hand position, a relaxed arch in the wrist, and when you play, follow the direction that your fingers extend. So go this way across the guitar. Don't do this. There's two reasons. One thing, it puts your hand in this weird position, which is not ergonomic. And the other thing too is that this thin little string at the top, if you go more ponticello, it sounds super bright and naily, right? Whereas if you play over here, full, so it kind of evens out the sound, makes the sound a little bit more full um, as you get to those thinner treble strings. You could do the same thing with M-A, 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 M-A. So either I am walking or M-A walking and rest stroke and free stroke. The second one is triplets, so groups of three, right? This is a great exercise because the accent will occur on a different finger each time. It would be I, M, I, M, I, M, I, M, I, M. This is really good training for actual playing. time keeping track of your fingers or you're accidentally repeating fingers, say the finger names out loud. I am, 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 I am. If you're saying the fingers out loud, you probably are less likely to make a mistake. It makes it less abstract. It makes it much more clear to your brain that, oh, I do this, then I do this. You're identifying the fingers, right? And then the final exercise is groups of four, which is kind of similar to the groups of two, but... And of course with M-A, etc. Um, you also want to practice these with rest stroke and free stroke. So free stroke is when you play the string, 
and your finger just comes into the palm without resting on any other strings. Rest stroke is where your finger rests on the string below. And it'll, it'll look more clear when I bring the camera in close. Playing these on open strings is huge, and don't think that it's just a beginner exercise. It's for advanced guitarists too, because like, you know, if you have nails, um, playing on that exact moment where the flesh and the nail um, contact at the same time, that's a very precise movement. And it's something you can really work on on the right hand on its own. Um, I still warm up with this every day. I sit down with the guitar, I just try to make sure I'm being very accurate, very consistent in my sound, and that I'm relaxed. There's so many things we could work on, right? Like a professional guitarist could work on this a lot because there's no limits to how precise you can be or how consistent or how relaxed you can be when you play. And then if you do this regularly, alternating your fingers, hopefully you'll do it in your pieces too. If your muscle memory is so used to always alternating, it probably won't do repeated fingers in your repertoire because it's just so used to doing um, alternation. So make sure that you practice this a lot until it's, your right hand goes on automatic pilot and just plays um, alternating fingers at all times, no matter how complicated your music is, right? So let's bring the camera in close and, uh, and you can just see a little bit of a more close up of what the fingers are doing. So again, the concept is alternating fingers. So it's just like walking, right? So don't hop on one leg because it, it would sound like, it just doesn't sound as fluid as that. So let's go through the exercise. Here's the first line. These are eighth notes. So two um, notes per string. So again, we're moving in this direction here by following the extension of the fingers rather than this, where our hand ends up like this. Instead, we're just going to use the hand the way it's designed and just go up through here. You can move your forearm if you want, or you can just position yourself so that you undershoot and overshoot a little bit, or a combination of both. Second example is groups of three. Again, this puts the accent on I, then M, I, M, etc., etc. Let's do the same thing with M A. Final example is in sixteenth notes. It's really helpful, especially in the groups of three, if you're getting confused, either say it out loud, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, or you can just say the accented notes. I am, I am. Um, there's a couple of other things you can do, rest strokes, of course. Right. You could also try um, a combination of, of the two. So you could try doing a rest stroke on the first note of each group. So be, it is, nothing happens on the sixth string, but... Rest free, free, rest free, free, rest free. Rest free, free, rest free, free, rest free, free. It's a mouthful, but that's a really good exercise because what it does, it um, people have a problem like changing their hand position when they play rest stroke. They tend to go like this, and free stroke they go like this, which is good. But this makes you do both at the same time. So like rest free, free, rest free, free, rest free, free, rest free, free, and it makes you not change your hand position. It's just one hand position. The whole time. So that's another like, um, that's probably for more advanced students though, so don't worry about that if you're a beginner. 
So that's pretty much it. Just um, try with different articulations. You could try with staccato. Uh. With open strings, the second note will still ring out, but it's still good practice, pre-planting that is. So it's like you pre-plant the next available finger on the string. As I said, the open string will still ring out on the final note, but it's still good practice for your right hand. But essentially, do this in all sorts of different ways. You could also add dynamics in there. Again, you want to make sure that your right hand is just going into automatic pilot. And of course, the other thing you can do is use a metronome. And if you use a metronome, you just kind of up your speed one notch at a time. So, you know, if you have a metronome like this, then you just like, once you think you can complete it really well, then you just up it by one notch, do it again, make sure you can do it, keep upping it by one notch at a time. Um, but making sure that you're, you know, all those elements like your legato and your relaxation and um, the evenness of your tone, that all these things are continuing to um, be high quality before you turn the metronome up another notch. So you just keep it nice and slow. It could take days, weeks, months, doesn't matter. Um, you just progress with all those good elements and then um, you can up the metronome a little bit if you want and go for faster speeds. But there's many things to work on with this very, very simple exercise.